Hi guys, today we're gonna to react to a live performance of Edge of the World by Love Bites. This happened to me with Bandmade as well. Every time we react to Love Bites, one of those uh, uh, bands that, that made us uh, discover, so to speak, the music that's coming from Japan, I'm reminded of how much I love them. And I think I, I even kind of miss those types of songs that start mellow with Miyako usually on the piano. I think this is their uh, older lineup uh, with Miho on bass. Um, just loving it. Yeah, it's it's one of those uh, older shows that, uh, you know, those early videos that we covered, which, yeah, when we were first introduced to Love Bite. So it's uh, always cool to go back to those. And again, I always love seeing them live. And this is also a slight reminder of how far they've gone since then. And it's, it's especially evident uh, with Asami's pronunciation. Here it was a little lacking, whereas today it's much better. She's gone a long way. But, uh, but still, her voice sounds so good. And as you said, Miyako on the piano, it's just majestic every time. So far, the slightly less aggressive nature of the song lets uh, Asami's voice really transcend it. She really pierces through and accompanies all, all the instrum instruments uh, very well. She always does this, 
but now I can really, really, you know, take in her voice because this is a live performance. It reminds me of uh, what I said about Fuki's voice that pierces through the instruments every time we see them uh, perform. Uh, they have a slightly different leveling between each other. So in songs like these, you can really, really hear uh, Asami's voice and how wonderful it is. Yeah, it um, it actually leads the song. Uh, they accompany her rather yeah. than the other way around. Um, yeah. But um, I have to say something about Miyako here. Um, she's again in her Gary Moore mode, playing some blues. That was fantastic. It's nice to go back to this. I forgot that she did that a few times during this show, I believe, where the, the style is, is very, very bluesy. I know Gary Moore is one of her idols, and uh, yeah, it's a bit of an homage, it feels like, every time. And it's a little different to her other solos, where it just, you know, your, your jaw drops to the ground because she's so fast and, and, and so you know it's like she does things that leave you in sort of disbelief here you can believe the playing it just sounds so good you know so you, you get to sort of enjoy it for that which is yeah. really really cool you know she's kind of a bit toned down as far as her ability because yeah. she can go nuts she's yeah. definitely one of the best i've seen and there's also, of course, a very strong element of maturity coming from that solo. And the lack of expression on her face gives it a, a nice mix when you see her perform like that. You, oh, all this is coming from her? She doesn't strike you as, by, by appearance as somebody who would play something like that specifically, something that, uh, you know, bluesy. So that gives it an interesting experience. Yeah, yeah. Her, her sort of stoic appearance, it's become kind of her signature, you know what yeah. I mean? She's kind of like the more uh, reserved one, the sort of uh, uh, thinking musician, you know? Yeah. Kind of the genius behind the band, but yeah, I, I love her playing. It's just yeah, fantastic. Her normal mode is hyper-focused. That's how mm. you usually find everything, even in pictures. <laughs>
it's like in case you thought this was just a ballad we're gonna we're gonna get into yeah, some heavy yeah. here so many gears and it was it was both like uh almost like a, a speed metal and then it went into melodic yeah. it was just yeah. yeah just a nice mix yeah so many gears uh, I mean, it also got me thinking asami wrote this song so with her lyrics she has a, a what i would call a sunny disposition she's very positive so a lot of her songs are are uh, um, you know what some people would term maybe a little bit more fluffy it's like all rainbows and sunshines even though there's darkness to this one a little bit it's still on that positive um, yeah. And whereas Miho's lyrics were, you know, dark as mm-hmm. So I think since Miho left, I hope that they find that that dark element again as well. You know, so there's a little bit of this and, and that, and not just in one direction. Because I, I I'm not sure if any of the other ones actually write in that sort of area. You know, where it's okay. a bit darker, more more serious. You said Asami has a brighter disposition when she writes songs mm-hmm. in here. You say this is darker in here. I, I can see the darkness in the lyrics. I can also see a sense of hopefulness. She's hopeful in yeah. this one. She's like trying to, to educate who's ever listening to a better way of looking at the, at the world. This is basically a, a song that's trying to teach people to become selfless, to think in terms of we and not of I, uh, and not dwell in materialism and, and look at the things that are more important in life. This is basically the, the message of the song. Yeah. Basically. And and she she kind of attributes the sorrow as she as it says in here to to that to to people hating deceiving lying hurting each other whereas we can always do things differently and not do all of these things actually yeah. help each other uh, you know it's it's a song that promotes love and basically just just positivity all around yeah. you know d- don't fear to stand up it's it's never too late it's never it's not over till it's over that kind of thing so uh, still, what a great song. Yeah. I think there were more gear shifts in this one than than usual, yeah. which uh, which I really enjoy. Yeah, yeah. I also caught glimpses of of influences from from a variety of bands. I heard I could hear Metallica in there, and I even heard to, at the beginning where where she when uh, Midori accompanied uh, Asami, she, she was the, I think the only instrument. Uh, I heard uh, what uh, Scorpions usually do in in their slower parts when they're in their songs. Just an awesome experience. Yeah, there was like a little bit of many things in this one, and yep. uh, and. It came together really nicely. Uh, yeah. I really enjoyed it. And again, Asami's voice sounds uh, fantastic. This was a, a like a great showcase yeah. for her. Wonderful showcase. Hit some yeah. great notes and yeah, yeah fantastic. I agree. I agree. Again, Love Bites. Yeah, one of the best bands around. Yeah, no question. Indeed, indeed they are. If you enjoyed this episode, guys, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and click the little bell icon so you'll get notified on all our future videos. If you have a request you'd like bumped up the line, please make it through Buy Me a Coffee. All contributions are, of course, very much appreciated. Thank you all for sticking with us. Thank you all for your time. Because we've been covering a lot of their songs that are more current, where they are young women, it was actually a little bit strange to kind of see them, you know, seven years uh, uh, in the past is not a lot for us, but for them, it's third of their lives on average yeah, six and um, or close to that. So there's a, a massive difference. They look very different. They're like mm-hmm. uh, young teenagers here and, yeah. uh, and the, not that the energy has dropped in any way, you know, no. still the same energy. Yeah. And it's amazing to see that when they were teenagers, how good their music was. Thanks again, guys. We appreciate you more than you know. Without you, there would be no show. So yeah, keep coming back. We are loving all the views, the engagement, and everything you uh, send our way. And uh, yeah, we will be back in a couple of days with a new episode. So uh, see you then. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.